The provocative new series, Fellow Travelers, is not just brilliant, but it's based on a true chapter in American history when the gay government employees were hunted down as a national security risk. Matt Bomer and Jonathan Bailey star as forbidden lovers with careers that in D.C. forced them to live double lives. It's an incredible show. Take a look at this clip. Okay, Hawk, I have to ask you a question. Are you sure you have to ask what we're doing? I stop thinking if it's right or wrong, or even sin, I don't care. But there is one thing I don't think I could live with. Are you going to marry Lucy Smith? Please welcome Matt Bomer and Jonathan Bailey. Welcome. Hey, well, well, good to be here. Much. Thank you for yeah. having us. Yeah, well, you two are quite gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, Matt, this show uh, tells us the love story of two men who are uh, political staffers in D.C. Mm -hmm. over the span of four decades, from the 50s to the 80s. Mm -hmm. And part of the show is about Senator McCarthy, Joseph McCarthy, who was just a nightmare and ruined everybody's life. Yeah. yeah. Uh, especially uh, in your situation, uh, what they call the lavender scare, mm -hmm. uh, what the show deals with, they went out, he went after gay, gay people. Yes. Um, tell us about that a little bit. So in 1953, uh, Senator McCarthy and Roy Cohn convinced President Eisenhower to enact uh, an executive order that banned all LGBTQ people from Wasn't government. Wasn't Roy Cohn so it turned into gay? A, yes. 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 Closeted, <laughs> but it turned into a massive witch hunt. An estimated 10,000 people lost their jobs. Multiple yeah. people committed suicide. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a very dark chapter in our history. They never yeah. looked at the FBI head either. Yeah, because he was, was gay too. There, there, was, well, there were a lot yeah. of yes, yes, a lot of duplicity. I, I, duplicity yeah. is a good way to put it. This show is brilliant. It's just I just have to say it's wonderful, and you guys are excellent in it. Um, Jonathan, you play Tim, who falls in love with Matt's character Hawk, mm -hmm. and you said that by the end of filming, you guys were bonded for life. What made these roles so special for you? Well, there's something quite cosmic about the love story of Tim and Hawk, yeah. um, and they're two souls that really come together. I love your accent. <laughs> I love going anywhere where there's a round of applause for just being British. <laughs> um, but yes, and uh, I think that the specificity of the queer experience between the two of them is, is, is something that is just sort of enchanting and it required so much commitment uh, from everyone who uh, told the story. And so, much like Tim and Hawke, I think me and Matt... You know, Matt is someone who I've looked up to because he's been wave, uh, riding a wave of progress for years yeah. in the way that he's conducted his you know, professional and personal life. So. To be uh, boogie boarding alongside him on that wave now is really, <laughs> it's like, it's lovely. I can't even do press without Johnny anymore. Like, we have to do every job together. Because it's, it. it's such a unique thing, as yeah. you can imagine, to yeah. do four decades of a relationship yeah. together and yeah. to have to have intimacy scenes and just commit so much to a lot of the work we did. It was just a really unique, profound experience. Well, and so many people know about McCarthy and what he did, but they don't know about this part. So I love seeing a show that has a historical basis that's teaching yeah. people through the, the eyes of your love story. But Matt, your character Hawk spends his life um, hiding who he truly is in order to survive. Could, can you relate to that at all? I mean, yeah, I, I grew up in a little town in Texas where, you know, I, to me, the stakes in high school felt life and death. So I had to bifurcate and compartmentalize my life and find a way to just get out of there and find my own tribe of people at some right. point. Um, it's a great town, by the way. I love it. I love being <laughs> from there. Um, but. Uh, it, I could relate to the stakes he was operating under in some regard. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, um, Jonathan, there are some steamy <laughs> sex scenes. They're shot beautifully mm. um, in this show. And, and seeing a series focus on a love story about two men is still something, in my opinion, we don't see enough of. Mm -hmm. um, have you heard from people that this show is having a profound impact on Yeah, them. yeah, I really have. And it's so grounding, especially when we're talking about it and doing press as well, uh, to be celebrating something that's so impactful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, yesterday morning, this is, I've got a message that I want to oh. read out. Uh, I've changed the name, just for anonymity. Dear Johnny, the likelihood of you seeing this is non-existent. So I can be entirely honest. As the daughter of a man who lived a heterosexual life, 
but loved another man for almost 40 years. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. Fellow Travellers has brought me unbearable pain, but also a somewhat optimistic closure. I just wanted to tell you that your incredible work inspires people and heals lives. I have even written a poem about Fellow Travellers. Yes, it's rough around the edges, uh, but it's heartfelt. And I'm a clinical researcher, not a poet. My dad's name was Gregory, and he left this world 20 years ago. Oh, wow. Thank you, Johnny. Oh, wow. I want to hear that poem. <laughs> I know, yeah. Wow. yeah. yeah. So, just to change that up a little bit, you're in, also in the movie uh, Maestro. Yes. yes. Which is yeah. directed, written, starring, also besides you, Matt, Bradley Cooper. We are really starring Bradley Cooper. Well, yeah. And Harry <laughs> Mulligan. <laughs> that and a pack of cigarettes. I've never seen so much smoking in a show. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, he was a huge, you know, I know, yeah, Bernstein and the wife also. Huge, yeah. yeah, both of them. It was, that was what they did. It's about Leonard Bernstein's life and how, you know, he was gay and I guess you call him bi. bisexual. Yeah. 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 He was married, very devoted to his uh, yes. wife, just like Cole Porter in a way, you know? Mm -hmm. Two great musicians with wives and then a gay lifestyle on the side. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Anyway, uh, I was produced by Spielberg. Correct. And uh, Scorsese. Mm. Yeah, no pressure. It's a heavy oh, duty. Oh, so tell us a little bit about it was that. Fun. I hope every actor gets to work with Bradley. He's such a, a generous and honestly like an electric director. He told me when I got the job, he was like, you'll never see yourself acting if you take this job. And I was like, what does that even mean? <laughs> but he has this style of directing that just brings you so into the moment where everything's happening for the first time mm -hmm. on camera. He doesn't do a lot of takes. And Spielberg was there on set for some of the days. I, you know him well. But for me, I, I grew up loving E.T. was like the first movie I remember yeah, seeing. Yeah, yeah. And wow. suddenly he has the EPK camera and he's you know, filming us while we're rehearsing the scene, my first scene. I was oh, trying not God. to die while <laughs> focusing in with Bradley at the same time. But was an it amazing. Did you feel a little intimidated, a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know, again, it, it's a testament to Bradley because somehow I was, I was able to forget about all that and just mm -hmm. tap into this. Good scene. to know. Yeah. Well, Jonathan, at the same time that you were filming Fellow Travelers, you were also filming one of my favorites, the highly anticipated third season of Bridgerton. Woo! with the upcoming Wicked movie. That's right, so you're yeah. saying booked and busy. Let's start with Bridgerton, though. Give us all the spoilers. What can you tell us about <laughs> season three? It's going to be juicy. Yes. <laughs> no surprises there. But yeah, no, it's going to be brilliant. I'm handing the, the, the baton down to Luke Newton, uh, Colin. Yes. Uh, the brother and, uh, and Nicola, who plays Penelope. And it's going to be, you know, it's just going to continue to enchant. It's awesome. And it's, I'm really excited to see it as well. Well, people are really excited for the Wicked movie as well. Yeah. Give us the spoilers for that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we all know Wicked and we love it. But yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know those um, rules. <laughs> yeah, when it's put on camera with uh, Cynthia Erivo. Yes. Oh. And Ari is an incredible actress and hilarious and and you know Michelle Yeoh won her Oscar yes. she got off the plane and came straight into a scene with me and Ari oh my god so I feel I'm sorry Michelle it was fall from grace <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah so it's gonna be just amazing and John Chu the director it's just gonna be an expansive version of it and it's it's gonna blow your mind oh I can't wait thank you yeah. okay. so I do have a question, I have a question. <laughs> so Given all of the all of the symptomatic behavior we're seeing with people, quickly, what do you want people to take away from mm -hmm. fellow travelers? Thirty seconds. Well, the most remarkable thing for me is that people see themselves in it. Yeah. People feel seen by the show, and that goes for people in their twenties all the way through to their sixties, seventies. It's been an amazing response, and I think as an artist, that's what you're always hoping to do yeah. with your work: that people feel seen and feel more human. Seeing the show. And then we learn from our history, we don't make the same mistakes, and we understand this sort of world that these characters are living in is happening now in the world yes, that we is. live in. Yeah. Well, being gay was illegal in Britain up until what? So, fellow it's travelers, yeah. is on yeah. Showtime right now. If you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor, please watch.